Hi there, welcome back to my channel. I wanted my to do a review of the game Overboard by Inkle. I actually just released a preview to the trailer a couple of days ago, but this is a review of actually playing it. I played the game fully through two times. Um, actually more than two times. Three or four times because I was trying to get a different outcome at the end. But as you remember, I need to see if you can see the review of the preview that I did a couple of days ago. This is the game. It's like a reverse murder mystery where you are the murderer. You play as Veronica Binsley. She murders her husband while aboard a trip to New York. And there's a baby day has been heaven's fault, which I've actually never and played either of those really games. That's really interesting. If you recall this game, it was a reverse murder mystery um, where you are the murderer. You play as Veronica Binsley. She's the woman in the red dress with the straw hat. She murders her husband Malcolm while they're on the ship on their way to New York to escape from England where they've gone through some sort of financial scandal. It's not really clear what the issue is with England, but they're leaving to move on to this new area in New York to start their lives over. So what I liked about this game is they gave us a bit of a backstory, but kind of kept it vague, which I think is nice. Normally with games, you get to almost too much in the trailer sometimes. So this is the introduction, which you might have seen again in the preview trailer, where this is them departing, basically leaving for New York. Um, and of course, at that time in 1935, it was probably a big deal to move internationally. Um, so that kind of puts a spin on it too. Obviously, the ship is not empty. There are other people who are also we on this together. cruise ship. Together in the rain. So let's listen to down. the introduction. I told him I Chills. could see dolphins Chills. playing Chills. in the wake of the boat. He leant over to see them. So I grabbed him by the belt. And I threw him overboard. Ah! What I like about this ah! game is that we got to see the murder right away from the jump. So there's no mystery in terms of what happens. He definitely flung him overboard from the ship. But then we get to get into the gameplay the next day, after she's done this the night before. We're introduced to a slew of characters. For example, in this situation, from the jump, when you wake up the next morning, you're introduced to the crew night. He's just coming by to let her know about breakfast. Um, doesn't seem like a big deal in terms of the story, but when you get deeper into it, every interaction that you have with anyone on the ship, whether it's another, you know, passenger or a crew member, it interacts what you can affects what you can interact with and do later on. As you see here, there's about seven or eight rooms that you can choose from, or you can choose to jump overboard yourself. But there are a ton of rooms. Um, depending on what time you go into a room, depends on who's going to be there. You can go to different rooms and a different character will be there, and no one will be. It can really vary. Um, another important character that you'll meet is the commander, as you see here. You can talk to him. He's usually up on the bridge at certain times in the game. Um, and he could be a friend or a foe. Each of these interactions really lets you make the decision how you want to interact with him. You can be very neutral, you can be very friendly, or you can be very negative. Or defensive in some of these conversations, and I think it affects gameplay going forward. You want to have as many allies on your side towards the end of the game. Um, another character here is a retired, I guess he's like a police officer, like a military man. I actually did not in my three or four gameplays spend a lot of time in this room, the smoking room with him, or this other gentleman here. Um, so it's, you know, what's important is really paying attention to what each character says, both Veronica and who she's interacting with, because that can change depending on the time of day and who you spoke to prior. So you may learn tips and tricks about other players from various players. Like one woman in this game is very gossipy and she likes to keep dirt on everybody. And so she's a great resource to get tips and tricks from as well. What I noticed with this game, especially during my first playthrough, some things don't change no matter what you do. So for example, in this situation here, with Clarissa, no matter when you interact with her, this is how she's going to be. Um, I played three or four times and my her dialogue never really changes, and how she responds to me doesn't really change either. It seems like she's a scorned mistress, and so her interaction is going to be the same no matter what. So it's like, well that's interesting. And then once you get to the final point of the game, after you've had eight hours in game to do whatever you're going to do, 
the former police officer slash military man finally catches on that Malcolm is not with her, her being Veronica, or anywhere on the ship. If you haven't done your job correctly like I did in my first playthrough, you end up getting arrested. Um, when you play through the second time, it'll show you in green what interactions you chose the first time around. So you can either choose that same interaction or choose a different interaction. Um, and then in the upper left-hand corner, I'm playing this on the Nintendo Switch, you can see that there's some new objectives. Since this is my second time playing through, it asked me if I could get Clarissa to open up. Is the ship really sinking, and can I get enough cash to play the game? I didn't have those options the first time around in my first playthrough. Um, nor did I go to every room in my first playthrough. So my second playthrough, I actually went into the chapel that's on the bottom left of the ship. Uh, the god character is very hilarious. I really enjoyed interacting with that room. I wish I would interact with that room more through my gameplays. I just didn't. It, unfortunately, because of the timing, again, you only have eight hours in-game to complete whatever you're going to complete and, and talk to whoever you're going to talk to. I never really had enough time to go to the chapel. I only did it a couple times in the gameplay, and the chapel was very, very funny. But I don't know if the information was very insightful. Sometimes it's more beneficial to talk to the other characters rather than going to the chapel. This is a cute part of the game. That's what I've liked overall is that all the characters were really thoroughly fleshed out and very enjoyable. Um, even Lady H, who's the, the ship gossip, she's the elderly woman, single, I think she's widowed or divorced, on the ship going to America. She's very gossipy. She knows something about everybody, but she wants something for her time. She wants to be compensated for her energy. And so that's kind of important too. You have to keep in mind exactly what you have to offer someone else because they may not want to tell you anything or they may not be very agreeable on your side on, on just good nature and not everyone's very friendly. That's what I really enjoyed about this game was that there was so much to interact with. Even with three or four interactions, I never completed all the objectives. I still haven't figured out if the sink is really ship if the ship is really sinking. Um, but think, let me know what you think of the game if you end up playing it. Has anyone ever got the ideal resolution? Um, I still haven't after, like I said, three or four playthroughs, but the game was very interesting. I really enjoyed it.